All right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. It is that time again. Early morning crypto talk. Bitcoin Brandy here from Los Angeles, California. Hope you guys are having a good day so far. Those of you on the East Coast has already been up for a couple hours. Let's see who do we have on the line so far. We've got Shauna Ross. Good morning. Andrew Cobb. Desiree Potts. Mathus. Mark. Letitia. Bonita Nunez, Anthony Pinkston, Nicholas, Gerald Gardner, JJ Lopes from the UK, Asmaret from the UK. Good morning, good morning, or for you guys out there, good evening. Halfway through the week. Nice and hot summer here in LA. I will say this, I am not a licensed financial advisor to be dispensing financial advice. I read the news, get my opinion, share suggestions, and it is up to you to make an informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to go in. Joseph Font, Bethany Gibbs, Paul, Paul, I'll be seeing you next weekend here in L.A. Andrew Cobb, yeah, I see the, this week's gains. Dad, I don't know. The coin market cap crossed 300 billion. The crypto market. Let me take a look. While I'm doing that, as a disclaimer, uh, not a disclaimer. I have four rules I live by in the crypto space. Rule number one: education is key. Every, education is everything. Rule number two. Never invest money you cannot afford to lose. Rule number three, always get your return on investment back as fast as possible. Don't get greedy. And rule number four, where do you see yourself in three months, six months, a year from now? What are you willing to do to make it happen? Take action, stay focused, and do not get distracted. Already this morning, I got hit up with two other opportunities. And when I told people, I said, um, I'm like the, the, at the top of my company right now, uh, and I'm focused on what I'm doing. And they still said, oh, yeah, well, you should still look at what I'm doing. <laughs> Stay focused. Now, this isn't going to guarantee you success, but it will at least minimize your risk. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most that we can ask for. All right, I've got a lot of, I mean, a lot of news took place last night. I can't cover it all. Lashana, good morning. Hey, Paul, Ron Ross is going to be there as well. We'll be there on Saturday. So I got to get with you on, uh, on that. And I'm waiting for my big banners because I don't do physical meetings like that here in L.A. So they're out there in in Texas and in uh, Chicago but I need to order some to have on hand and I don't know if my order is going to get here fast enough but we'll work it out all right let's see the first article up is about the ETF I've been trying to read this one for a couple of days now because I think that this ETF is going to be 50 percent of the reason why the crypto market is going to explode later this year the other 50 percent is going to come from the futures allowing the market to explode meaning instead of them shorting it and betting it low they're going to start to bet it high so a combination of those two things you're going to see an explosion in the crypto market especially with bitcoin and when bitcoin rises all the rest rise with it Although right now I'm looking at it, the last couple of hours or so, it's been on a downtrend. So I'm going to watch closely to see if it dips below $8,000. If it can maintain this and keep going above maybe 8500 Because it's in the red right now, 0.72% negative. Less than uh, a little more than half a percent. So I'll watch that very closely because if it starts to drop, then it will drop. 
and everything else seems to be stagnant. Uh, except, what is this? 29% rise. IOST. I have not heard of that coin. 29.36% rise right now. Could be a pump a dump. Maybe. But the rest of the market, all 100 coins, look pretty pretty flat. All right, first up, let's talk about the ETF. Oh, I got to put that link in the article uh, in the tab so you guys can read it if you want to. Working back channels at the SEC and the CFTC in particular. We've come across two sources that seem to be nearly certain that the crypto ETF conversation is about to take a serious, bullish turn. The background for the optimism is tempered with some specific downside. Coming crypto and ICO regulations, both sources said that the nearly certain approval of a Bitcoin ETF and other crypto ETF products will be announced alongside the first set of crypto regulations of substance from both the SEC and the CFTC. Our most optimistic source coming from the CFTC said the following. I would call it 90% at this point. The crypto markets have moderated and regulators have watched the lack of drama surrounding Bitcoin futures across several global exchanges. The price moderation and adoption of a peer product is what the conversations have centered around. In January, we were justifiably concerned about a bubble and the harm a, a quickly approved product could attract speculators and create losses that led to significant lawsuits. Now those factors seem to be mitigated significantly. The second source, a former SEC employee who left the regulator two weeks ago, had this to say, I would expect a positive outcome in September. Or if it gets strung out a little further, it is simply a few dotted I's and cross T's are being finalized on larger regulatory exchange language in the crypto space. To be clear, most of the regulation will be first focused on ICOs and the issues those pose for retail investors at the moment. U.S. residents are sending money to all sorts of exotic locations to invest in unregulated instruments with absolutely zero recourse for losing every cent they've put at risk. ICO regulation will begin to solve those issues and keep client assets on shore. They want to keep the money here. Both sources made further comments, all having to do with the runaway that Bitcoin and crypto futures Ethereum have provided for ETF products taking center stage late this year and into 2019. The regulatory agencies are fully aware that once this door is cracked open, it will create a flood of submissions, approvals, new products in every color, shade, and denomination connected to crypto. Thus, the congruent push for regulation that will provide the architecture for fair and equitable markets to surround the newly regulated asset class. Still, this is big news as we are essentially being told that an approval is all but guaranteed. If you take a look at the price movements connected to the industries that joined the ETF movement and the institutional assets that followed, an expected spike in prices isn't far-fetched. One reason why billionaires and well-known asset managers have been heard discussing and investing in cryptocurrencies via pure means or via crypto hedge funds, interesting indeed. So in layman's terms, and, and one thing I disagree with, because this article is a little cautious about at the same time that they announce the ETFs, they're also going to announce the, the hardcore regulations. I don't see that as a bad thing, as a negative. I think that once those regulations are there, what, what investors want to know is that, that something's there. And what is it? What they don't like is the unknown. That they don't know just what laws we're going to have to deal with in the future. But once you put it down on paper and everybody knows, you know, who's on the playing field, then I think you're going to have a lot of confidence happen because people know what to do, what to expect. Then you add the, the ETF on there and boom, you're going to see an explosion. That's my prediction. 
So that means there's a small sweet spot right now opportunity to collect as much Bitcoin as you possibly can between now and around the end of September, October. You got a good five, six weeks, maybe seven weeks before you start to see things. And I, and I, I still think you're going to see a, a market correction right now. Bitcoin price might drop back down to $6,000 at least one more time this summer. So we're coming at the end of July, going into August. I think August is going to be kind of flat. Well, uh, no, I think it might be volatile, but going on the downward trend. And then around September, you're going to start to see a change, kind of like what happened last year when things just started to explode the end of the uh, third quarter and the, and the entire fourth quarter. My opinion, that doesn't mean it's guaranteed it's going to happen that way. It just might not happen that way. All right, here's another article. And this one is, in one year, Samsung has gone from Bitcoin miner manufacturer to now accepting crypto. I think, guys, we are going to start to see technology with this whole crypto on blockchain that we haven't even thought of yet, haven't even imagined yet, is going to start to spring up. And we're going to be like, whoa, I didn't even think of that. But companies like Samsung that's in competition with uh, with Apple, with Microsoft, and who can have the next innovative smartphones, you're going to see your smartphone device as your walking bank account. It's going to be able to do everything. It's going to, And it's going to be so crypto friendly, it's not even going to be funny. The things you're going to be able to do with the future phones. It's, it's basically going to have a walking blockchain phone. Samsung. The $290 billion electronics giant has started to accept crypto in its stores in the Baltic region as an alternative to fiat money on July 21st, 2018. That's an important date right there. In South Korea, Samsung remains as the dominant conglomerate in virtually every major industry, including insurance, real estate, construction, shipbuilding, automotive manufacturing, and finance. For decades, Samsung has continued to aggressively expand into a wide range of industries with a focus on developing innovative technologies and solutions to combat existing companies. Most recently, Samsung has established its focus on the global cryptocurrency sector, using its resources to compete with major companies in the cryptocurrency mining and payment industries. Merely months after initiating its Bitcoin ASIC miner manufacturing venture with its foundry in its headquarters in Suwon, South Korea, Samsung has integrated cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ether, and NEM into its stores in Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. The Copay team, which announced its partnership with Samsung earlier this week, said that the South Korean technology conglomerate has acknowledged a growing demand towards digitized payment methods and agreed to a strategic partnership that would allow authorized Samsung dealers in the Baltic region to accept payments in digital assets. Customers in Tallinn, Riga, Vilnius, and Kanas can buy Samsung smartphones, tablets, laptops, TV sets, and more with digital money. There is a growing trend toward business digital, digitalization and allowing customers to pay for goods and services in cryptocurrency, whether at global retailers or local restaurants, the Copay team said. In an interview, former Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein emphasized that similar to the progression from gold to cash, Bitcoin could be the natural progression from fiat money to digital money. Further, he pointed out that it is arrogant for skeptics to dismiss the probability of consensus currencies competing against reserve currencies in the long term. That's a big statement to make right there. So it is arrogant for skeptics to dismiss it. Here's the bigger picture that I see. I see Samsung. Oh, wait, I'm not finished yet. Let me keep going. He said, you move a little bit further and you get Bitcoin that is not a fiat currency, so I don't trust it. I don't trust 
and I don't like it. On the other hand, if it works, I say maybe it was a natural progression from hard money to digital money. A blank fiend has been a critic himself. So interesting, he makes that comment. The acknowledgement of cryptocurrencies as a legitimate alternative means of payment by a company the size of Samsung could exponentially fuel the adoption of digital assets as currencies, especially in regions such as South Korea, China, and the Baltic that have already developed strong, cashless societies. Previously, Samsung emphasized the, that the performance of its Bitcoin mining equipment, manufacturing venture in its foundry based in Suwon, could potentially lead the conglomerate to engage in various cryptocurrency and blockchain related businesses. Other conglomerates in South Korea, such as the country's largest telecommunications giant SK Telecom and electronics conglomerate LG, have taken a different approach towards penetrating the cryptocurrency sector. SK acquired Corbit, the third biggest crypto exchange in South Korea, to appeal to retail traders in and individual investors, while LG has developed its own blockchain network to support decentralized applications. That's called dApps. What's next? A July report on the security of the blockchain and the usability of cryptocurrencies on smartphones has suggested that the integration of digital assets on Samsung Pay, a widely utilized fintech payment network in South Korea, could be next in line, especially given that its main competitor, Kakao Pay, has already integrated cryptocurrencies via Upbit, the country's most significant cryptocurrency exchange that operates. See that? See what happens? When one company does something, its competition will follow suit. Over the past few months, conglomerates in South Korea have shown a healthy competition between each other within the global cryptocurrency sector to remain at the forefront of cryptocurrency and blockchain tech development. Continuous efforts by Samsung, LG, and SK to improve the infrastructure of the local cryptocurrency industry will legitimize the cryptocurrency sector and provide a better ecosystem for developers, investors, and users. This is huge. It's bigger than I originally thought. Now that I'm finished reading the article, here's why. I say this all the time, especially in my presentations, that every single person out there will have two choices when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto. The first choice is to learn about it, engage, and get, get positioned to make money off of this thing and ride the rocket when it explodes. The second option is to ignore it, act like it doesn't exist, think that it's just a scam or it's too complicated or that it's not going to affect you. Go back to your 9 to 5 job and then one day you're going to see Bitcoin ATM machines everywhere you go. You're going to start seeing all restaurants and stores and Starbucks and stuck talking about we now accept uh, crypto payments. And then you're going to be on your job and they say, yeah, we're going to start paying your salary in Bitcoin. Here's something else that I didn't think of. What is the one thing that 90%, especially Americans, when they leave their house, there's two things they will not leave without. Do you know what those two things are? Their keys and their smartphone. People will, if they leave their smartphone at home, they will turn around in mid-traffic, risk being late to work, to go home to pick up their phone. So if people are keeping their phone on them like it's an extra body part and you got a company like Samsung that is behind the scenes, that's right, Andrew and their children, and Samsung behind the scenes is integrating and developing crypto blockchain technology into their phones. What do you think all of their comp competition is going to do? LG, Microsoft, Apple, the iPhones. What is going to happen when all of a sudden everybody's phone has something to do with blockchain technology, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies? Now you're talking about a near 100% exposure rate of the crypto space to everybody whether they like it or not because it's on their phone the new generation of phones that people are going to start to buy Samsung Galaxy 10 or the iPhone 11 12 whatever it is 
where it's going to be a feature on the phone whether you like it or not. Now we're talking 100% exposure ratio. When your smart TVs is connected to blockchain some kind of way because you got a Samsung smart TV. This is happening faster than I thought. And it just happened in a way I didn't even think of. What's going on, Mr. Gibson? I didn't even think of that. If everybody has a cell phone in their hand, I mean, do this today. Conduct an experiment yourself. If you're on a, your job, how many people on their job is always glancing at their phone every five minutes? You know, they got it underneath the desk, looking at, looking at their stuff. Go to a restaurant and, and see, are people actually having conversation or are all of them on their phone? Go to the air. I love doing this at the airport. I'll do this again when I fly to Chicago. I'm going to take pictures. And you'll see back in the day, and I, and I even covered this when I used to cover e-commerce years ago about the smartphones. I got to pull up that old video I made. But back in the day, you know, if you went to the airport, kids, you would bring books and games for your kids. They'd be running around wild. People were either reading their newspapers or having conversations with each other. But you go to the airport today, 99% of their people, once they get to their gate, they're on a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone. And nobody talking to each other. All of them. I was driving past my son's old high school for summer school, and the kids were coming from their lunch break and walking back to the school. It was like maybe 15 of them. And all of them had a phone in their hand. One, one kid nearly stumbled, stepping off the curb into the street. A couple of them were holding hands with each other, I guess, boyfriend and girlfriends. But each of them still had a phone in their hand, looking at their phones, and none of them talking to each other. <laughs> I don't know how this, this new generation is developing any social skills. But if blockchain and Bitcoin and stuff infiltrates your smartphone then everybody's gonna be a part of it and know about it so we have a small window small window of opportunity here that's right Anthony go to a doctor's office every single person's on a smartphone so let's go to the next article this is about a hedge fund backed by a guy named Mike Arrington Mike Arrington's hedge fund holds more Bitcoin than Ripple predicts Bitcoin to hit $25,000 this year Mike Arrington the founder of Arrington XRP Capital who raised eyebrows in November launching a hedge fund denominated in Ripple said the hedge fund actually holds more Bitcoin than Ripple during a CNBC crypto trader interview at Korea Blockchain Week. He also predicted Bitcoin's price will reach $25,000 this year. Arrington announced his $100 million hedge fund in November, which will invest primarily in cryptocurrencies and ICOs and possibly blockchain startups. What is Ripple's unique abilities? Arrington, who was the found, also the founder of TechCrunch, pointed out Ripple's unique ability to move money quickly across borders. Ripple is a really, really good way to move money, Arrington told Rand Neurner, the crypto trader host. We've denominated our fund in Ripple because it's a fantastic way to move money across the border quickly at almost zero cost. He said there is a lot of tribalism in cryptocurrency. The one thing they all agree on is they all hate Ripple, he said. He said critics think it is centralized and corporate managed, because it is. None of that's really true. Yes, it is, <laughs> Arrington said. Whether the centralized currencies find their way to better efficiency, Ripple is already fantastic. So, again, in the space, and they don't like to call Ripple XRP. They want you to separate it. I don't because it's the same freaking thing. 
Ripple, XRP. In their world, they're too different. Ripple is corporate kind of backed. There's an actual company called Ripple. This guy started a hedge fund, but he called it XRP. So if you go to a convention and you got a lot of these nerd boys running around, them fighting words, if you start talk, calling Ripple XRP, they will correct you in a minute. It's funny. I've seen it happen. So from a hedge point of view, it's great to denominate ourselves in XRP, he said. Asked if XRP leaves the fund open to value fluctuations. Arrington said, the fund's key concern is its underlying assets, which are diversified. Only 3-4% to 4 of the fund, a few million dollars worth, holds XRP, he said. Okay, you start a fund and you call it XRP fund, Arrington's XRP fund, but you only hold 3-4% to 4 of it is in XRP. <laughs> the rest is in Bitcoin, so why are you calling it the XRP fund? says we're vastly diversified he said adding that the fund holds more bitcoin than anything else as well as a lot of ether and other cryptocurrencies a more recent fund investment has been mainframe an american company which errington said has made the fund a lot of money he said a number of investments have also been made in korean companies which historically have been closed to outsiders the fund also has also invested in exchanges and dapps Arrington noted that he is always an optimist in saying he expects Bitcoin's price to hit $25,000 this year. And I read the article about the ETF, which I think is the reason why it will happen. Nur Nur agreed Bitcoin will hit $25,000 because he thinks a Bitcoin ETF will be approved between August and October. I agree with that. Michael Novogratz doesn't. He thinks it's not going to happen until uh, the next 12 months. But those two things, I, and well, I, I still think, like I said, the last article, ETF is 50% the reason why. The other 50% will be how the futures and uh, the CME and the CBOE react to the ETF. And will they start to bet high instead of betting low once their contracts end? I think that's the other 50%. So it's going to be intriguing nonetheless. All right, let's see. Facebook and Google in the news again. So Facebook and Google go back on decisions as BTC, BCH, XRP, and ETH fans react. Huh. Crypto prices have rebounded following the reversal of separate anti-crypto decisions by Facebook and Google. Uh, wait, wait. Who's the author of this article? Prerisha Garg. Are you assu assu assuming that because Facebook and Google reversed their decision, that's why Bitcoin is, is rising? I, I don't think so. But anyways, after previously banning cryptocurrency ads on its platform, Facebook has whitelisted Coinbase advertisements and Google on its part now includes major cryptocurrency coins in its exchange rate converter tool. BTC Manager reported earlier that Facebook and Google both faced backlash following poorly received unilateral action against cryptocurrencies on their platform. On its part, Facebook imposed a blanket ban on all cryptocurrency advertisements on its platform. In a separate blow to the cryptosphere, Google refused to add exchange rates for cryptocurrency coins such as Bitcoin and Ether. The two moves were made ostensibly to combat the possibility of facilitating fraudulent activities such as scam ICOs, but they attracted criticism because they were made arbitrarily and without consultation. Critics noted that regardless of the presence of crypto-related fraud, there are still a vast number of legitimate cryptocurrencies and crypto startups in existence. By lumping the entire cryptocurrency market under one category, 
the message from Facebook and Google was that they view the whole crypto sphere as an illicit space. At a time when the industry is on the cusp of a new growth phase in the investment from institutional finance, this was not received well at all. Facebook quickly softened its stance on cryptocurrency advertising, announcing that it will instead curate a white list of legitimate cryptocurrency organizations allowed to advertise on the platform. Following that announcement, Coinbase has finally been added to the whitelist, meaning that it can now place advertisements on the world's largest social media platform. The news popped up on July 20th, 2018, when CEO of the U.S.-based crypto exchange Brian Armstrong posted a tweet with an attached Coinbase ad in Facebook. The news immediately proved popular across the crypto sphere with Armstrong's tweet attracting over 700 retweets, more than 3,000 likes, and 160 replies. While this was going on, Google had its crypto positive moments as it added Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin to its online currency exchange conversion tool. This means that it is now possible for Google users to search for any of these coins and view its current price in their local fiat currency. Amidst the positive responses to Google's move, some have, however, pointed out that the coin exchange rates quoted on Google are different to those on CoinMarketCap, which is seen as one of the most accurate industry data sources. At present, there is no information available regarding where Google sources its quotes. BTC Manager reported earlier that Google co-founder Sergey Brin is involved in an Ethereum mining operation alongside his son. That is true. That came out last month. Or a couple weeks ago, I covered that. So here's my take on this. <laughs> I, I said it before, when Facebook made their announcement to ban all crypto advertisements, the first time I heard of it, they mentioned that they were getting pressure from the FBI, both Google and Facebook. And then all of a sudden, that article disappeared, and you don't hear no mention of the FBI at all. Another thing I thought of was that Facebook is doing this to eliminate any competition that they were about to make a move in the crypto space. And lo and behold, that's exactly what they did. They created an entire division and hired an individual to lead the entire blockchain development network for Facebook. And why not? If they got 2 billion users, that's a smart thing to do. But they did it by eliminating competition first. It's like sticking it to the Winklevoss twins. And then jump in on the bandwagon. Once they're ready. That's what's happening. Here's another reason why you need to watch who you listen to. Because there were people back then. And I'm saying back then like it was a long time ago. Just talking five months ago. That were like, see, Facebook is banning it. It's illegal. You shouldn't get involved. And those type of people wouldn't get involved in the space, wouldn't invest. They're going to believe everything they see and read as it's 100% fact. And then all of a sudden, four months later, they hear, oh, wow, Facebook says they were wrong. And they reversed, re reversed course and they have their own blockchain movement going on. Well, wow, Facebook's about to make a gang of money, but you're not because you listen to them. Are they correct now? Are you going to listen to them now? See, education is the key, ladies and gentlemen. Education, once you have education, then you will be able to make your own educated guesses and, and moves in this space and you'll be able to tell BS, you'll be able to read between the lines on what individuals are doing and what businesses are doing, why they're saying what they're saying, is there an ulterior motive, what's really going on. You'll be able to spot that. Just because it's in the article doesn't mean it's true. And nine times out of ten, if the media is reporting on it, then it's already too late. <laughs> All right? It's all right. If you see the media start going crazy talking about buy Bitcoin, that's when you might want to start looking at, okay, let's, let me get a sell position going here so I can make some money. They always say the opposite. They tell you to buy when it's high and they tell you to sell when it's low.
Alright, that's all that I wanted to cover today. I still have more articles, but I got started late today, so I've got things i got to do. But uh, some articles I'm going to cover tonight is um, this one, Financing with the Stars, Celebrities, and Cryptocurrencies. So when you get the stars involved, that's another mass adoption because of their followers. Then you've got, I've got here, Blockchain Technology Could Save the World. Oh, I'm going to lead with this one tonight. Blockchain technology could save the world from another global economic crisis, says former J.P. Morgan Big Shot. That's what I've been saying. So, yeah, I'm going to cover that tonight. And then Bitcoin dominates Fortune's most impressive young superstars list. So it's basically the 40 under 40 or the 30 under 30 kids getting wealthy off of Bitcoin. So I'll cover that tonight as well. And... I mean, every 10 minutes, new articles popping up. This one, as I'm speaking right now, just popped up. That says, U.S. Court Orders Founder of Bitcoin Investment Scheme to Pay Over $1.9 Million. What investment scheme? I'm just curious. i got to look at this real quick. Colorado resident Dylan Michael Dean used his UK-registered firm, the Entrepreneur's Headquarters Limited, TEH, in April 2018, to orchestrate a fraudulent Bitcoin investment scheme that succeeded in generating a whopping $499,000 worth of Bitcoin from 127 unsuspecting investors. I think I remember that. That, I remember reading that. And it just read, red flag, scam, just by looking at it. So these 127 people had no freaking crypto education whatsoever. Just by looking at what he was doing, you knew it was a scam. See, there's two ways you're going to get crypto education. One, getting it early, like through cryptogenics. Let's pay the 300 freaking dollars and get your education on. Or, you're going to get your education by losing freaking money. $50,000 education. $499,000 education, learning experience, because you lost money. Because you didn't know what to look for. And you got scammed. Alright, so I'm going to cover that tonight. And I'm sure more articles are going to be popping up. And i got to pick and choose which ones. The other ones I don't read, I read privately. I spend at least three to four hours a day on my own education. Bitmain publishes has rate stats. Claims just 4% of total Bitcoin. Oh, wait, wait. We're talking about Bitcoin mining. That gets my attention. 4% of total Bitcoin mining power. Bitmain itself. If you guys missed my uh, presentation from Saturday, my mining, I mean my Facebook Live, especially for women. If you are a woman in this space, I talk about how you can earn six figures a year in crypto and exactly what you can do to get yourself started and positioned. Number one. Spend the $300 to get your cryptogenics education. Number two, buy yourself a Green X mining machine. Those are two ways to get your foot in the door for education and as an investment to have some money coming in. There's no guarantee. There's always a risk. But the one thing about the education is nobody could take it away from you. You cannot unlearn what you've learned. So have a great day. I will be back this evening for late night crypto talk. If people have been asking about my travel arrangements, I made arrangements. I will be in Chicago. All, uh, well, I'll be in L.A. because I am in L.A. We've got an event taking place next Saturday in L.A. I'll post the um, information for that one. Paul will be there. Ron Ross will be there next Saturday. Then... August 10th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, I will be in Chicago. Then I will be next. The only thing I have after that is I'll be in Atlanta for my Morehouse homecoming. I don't know the exact date of that. i got to look that up. But I will be there for that. And then I definitely will be in Santa Clara at the end of November uh, for the Blockchain Expo. And our, I don't know the date of our Cryptogenics Convention which will probably be sometime in the beginning of October or something in Vegas. So, and I will be there. So that's rounding out to finish out the year. Not bad. So anyways, we'll see you guys tonight for Late Night Crypto Talk, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, around that time. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.
Crypto Gen X.